In this video, I will tell you about five skills that you will develop during your studies in business school. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. If this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Oliver and I'm a master's student in economics at Aalto University in Finland. And on this channel, we talk about education and early career development, specifically here in Finland. So if you're new here, do consider subscribing. Before we jump into today's topic, let me thank Aalto University for sponsoring this video. I've done both my bachelor's and master's degrees at Aalto, and I really recommend that you guys consider applying there in the next application period. More information about studying at Aalto in the description description box below. So what kind of skills do you actually learn in business school? As with the previous video where I talked about skills that you actually need for business school, there is no absolute answer to this question. The skills you learn will naturally depend both on your major and minor, plus the courses you end up choosing. However, I've noticed that there are five distinct universal skills that all business students develop regardless of what they major in. So the first skill you will learn in business school is a simple one, but even more so important. And that is being able to read and understand business text, both in an academic as well as a business setting. While this skill might seem obvious to most of you, I really recommend that you guys look at this topic from outside of our little business bubble, because you really only learn to appreciate it when you are working in an interdisciplinary environment where most of your co-workers don't have the business vocabulary that you do. It should be obvious enough, but being able to read and understand business lingo, for example, in contracts, business plans, financial statements, or simply in business papers like the Wall Street Journal is a huge advantage no matter what your job is. And I really recommend that you spend a good amount of time on studying the basic business terminology. Actually, my favorite tool to learn new business jargon is Investopedia. It's basically one of the go-to tools for many business students when searching for definitions, equations, or other business-related resources. They have a really good dictionary for financial terms that I use all the time, and I really recommend that you guys check that out. The second skill that every business student learns is analytical thinking. This is one of the most important skills for any business student, and thus it is important to actually understand what it means. Analytical thinking involves taking a complex problem with a large amount of information and breaking those problems down into more manageable components that you then methodically solve by gathering and using data to test different solutions to the identified problems. To put it in simple terms, analytical thinking is a fancy word for problem solving. In business school, you get to practice these skills almost every day when working on your coursework. This is especially emphasized in case assignments that are usually built on purpose to give you an information overload where you have too much data, aka information, to make sense of it at first glance. So the core idea of these assignments is to exercise analytical processes, you know, this is to say breaking down the assignments and the information provided into more manageable pieces. These smaller problems can then be solved one by one by isolating the key data from all the excess noise and by using that data to arrive at appropriate solutions. Analytical thinking is also a key requirement for most jobs that you as a future business graduate will apply for. The recruitment company that I work for as my day job actually did a survey where we asked hiring managers in Finland to tell us what skills they appreciate in university grads compared to other job applicants. And by far the most important skill was analytical thinking and the ability to work independently with complex problems. So moving forwards, the third skill you will develop in business school is a basic understanding of the global markets and how they work. This should be obvious enough, but understanding how the markets work is an extremely important skill for any business graduate. While those who major in economics, finance, or international business might focus more on the market mechanics during school, it does not really mean that the rest of us would not have any use for this information. Understanding concepts like central banks, their monetary policies, inflation, global logistics, and for example, the stock market is beneficial for every single person. And having at least a basic understanding of these topics will help you understand your respective business environment even better. 
In addition, understanding how the markets work can actually help you personally react to different global events in a more timely and, let's say, educated way. The current situation with COVID-19 and the subsequent global economic crisis is a great, although an absolutely horrific example of how people who don't understand global economics are sometimes blindsided by the impact that these type of events can have. Again, these events that usually start in one place and might not seem like a threat to you personally can cause a global chain reaction that end up impacting individual people and their personal finances around the world. As a terrible example, more than 16 million people in the US filed for unemployment just within the last few weeks. Please understand that I'm not saying that studying economics will prevent you from losing your job in this kind of a situation. But going back to my earlier point, being financially literate and by understanding how the markets work, you might just be able to prepare for these hard times if you know how to read the signs that the markets are going to slow down. So the fourth skill on this list is the ability to interpret and use financial data in context. This is a crucial skill for any business graduate as it will define your capability to jump into any position where you have to make decisions based on financial information. Being good with numbers in general and being able to do the math behind your company's performance numbers is a highly valued skill, but it won't matter if you don't understand what the results actually mean. This is also why it's so important to interpret everything in context. You know, the same numbers in one company does not mean the same thing in another. For example, you could have the skills to calculate your company's ROI or return on investment, but without understanding the market the company operates in and the standards that these KPIs are valued with, this number doesn't really tell you too much about the performance of the company. In short, everything has to be analyzed in context. Finally, all of the previous skills mentioned accumulate over time to the last and most important one of them all. The ability to make decisions in uncertainty by using the best information that you have at each moment in time. Or in short, arguing your decisions based on imperfect information. I've already talked about this topic in my previous videos, but to reiterate, most of the decisions made in business are done with imperfect information. This is to say that nothing is 100% certain, and rather you have to rely on the information that is available at each time and interpret that information in the best way you can in order to make an informed decision. So you will be expected to make these kind of decisions both during school and in work, no matter what your job or major is. Let me give you a couple of examples. In school, when working on a case assignment, you are usually given a huge amount of information that you're supposed to thin out so that you only have the key data points left. This also means that many assignments don't have an exact correct answer, but rather people will come to different conclusions depending on their personal interpretation. This is why it's common that you are given points not based on your final answer, but based on the solutions you find and the way you justify them using the data available. The same example can be applied to work life as well. Let's say that your company is trying to decide whether or not to invest in a new marketing automation system. Your job, for example, as a sales or marketing manager might be to provide the management team with a proposal on whether or not to pursue this investment. This task represents the complex assignment. This kind of large investment will impact the whole company and thus you have to look at the project from multiple different angles and analyze how it impacts each function and the company as a whole. This would be you breaking the problem into manageable pieces before coming to a final conclusion. Next, you will have to find information on the topic like what kind of software is available, how much do they cost, what systems are other companies in your field using, etc, etc. This is you looking for information and extracting the key data points from the noise. Next up, you have to make sure that this investment makes sense in the current market situation. Is the market thriving or are you waiting for a downturn? Can we afford an investment like this or is it too much of a risk considering where the market is heading? This is you analyzing the market. Next, you will have to make a financial analysis, including calculating key performance indicators and what they mean for your company. After all of this is done, it's time to share the results with your team and give your recommendation. Remember that all of your assumptions have been impacted the way you analyze 
and interpret the information that you have used. This is what I mean with making a decision based on imperfect information. This is also why the next step is to either recommend going ahead with the investment or not, and most importantly, sharing how and why you have come to this specific conclusion. So that is basically business school for you in a nutshell. Even though all of us learn individual skills based on our majors, all of them, like the five mentioned here, are there to help you make decisions in uncertain situations. Of course, you can look at this from a myriad of other angles, but this is just my honest opinion. But now it's your time to tell me what you think of this topic. Do you agree or disagree? Tell me in the comment section below and let's have a discussion. All right, that is everything for me this time. If you like what I'm doing here on YouTube, do give this video a thumbs up. If you didn't like what I had to say, the thumbs down button works as well. Also, if you have anything to ask about this or any other topic related to studying or building your early career, write them down in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks again for watching guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.